Hey, what's up guys? It's Roosevelt Williams with Tinker Pro, and in this video, I wanna share with you an issue I ran into recently. So as you guys know, my printer of choice is the original Purusha i3 MK3 S Plus. I've had it for about two years now, and I've completed some cool projects since I got it up and running. Things have been going well, but I ran into some technical difficulties on a project I've been working on recently. My printer started pausing mid-print, and an error message would appear on the LED display that read, Print Fan Error. This happened once or twice with the first few components of my latest project, but by the time I reached the fifth component, I received the error message several times in a row, and the print wouldn't get past 16% completion. This was not good because the fifth component had a two day print time and it wasn't the longest print of the entire project. So I knew something had to be done for me to continue. I did some research on the issue and it appeared to be a common problem for people who own the same printer. And thankfully, Purusha has a page with information on this issue and steps that you can take to troubleshoot the problem. I'll leave a link in the description below. The error message occurs when the print fan doesn't receive any RPM readings. I did some troubleshooting to determine what was causing the error message in my case. First, I did a visual inspection of the fan to make sure there wasn't any debris or filament tangled in it. The fan was clear, so I opened the empty case on the rear left side of the printer to unplug the print fan and plug it back in, but that still did not resolve the issue. Next, I went into the settings of my printer to manually start the fan and adjust the speed to spin at its highest speed of 255. I went to setting, temperature, and then fan speed to adjust the speed to 255. Once the fan was spinning at max speed, I manually moved the extruder on the X axis from left to right. The idea is that if the fan stops at a certain point along the X axis, then the issue could be a result of a broken wire. In some cases during larger prints, the wires in the harness at the rear of the extruder can bend drastically when the extruder reaches the furthest point along the x-axis. As wires become brittle over time, the bend can cause damage to the outer layers of the wire, which can cause them to strip and eventually break. Fortunately, in my case, the fan never stopped during this test, which meant the wires for my fan weren't broken. Lastly, I ran an RPM check on my fan to see once again if the source of my issue was due to wire damage. While the fan was running at max speed, I went to support and extruder info to check if the RPM reading for my print fan would change drastically as I moved the extruder along the X axis once more. If I noticed a large change in RPMs or a zero value, then that would be an indication of a damaged wire. The fan ran fine during the troubleshooting and I was left with no answers and an unresolved issue. One thing I noticed right away while reading through the Purusha troubleshooting page was a note that warned me to hold the fan vanes while blowing dust away from the print fan because without doing so, I could potentially damage the motor. In that moment, I specifically remembered a point in time where I was cleaning my printer with a compressed air can. While clearing dust from my printer with the compressed air, I remember blowing the print fan without holding the fan vanes. In fact, I remember the fan vanes spinning like crazy and they made an interesting sound while I carelessly continued to spray the fan vanes directly, seeing just how fast I could make the fan spin. Now that I think about it, that could be the exact reason for the issues I'm having now. Oops. Oh well, you live and you learn. With days passing by and my printer still giving me the print fan error, I was left with no other choice but to change my print fan. I purchased a new print fan from the Prusa Research website for $6.99 plus shipping. It took several days for the fan to come in the mail, but when it finally did, it was time to get it installed. Thankfully, Purusha also has a page with step-by-step -step instructions on how to replace your print fan if you ever run into a similar issue and need to change your fan. Again, Purusha saves the day. Thank you, Purusha. I gathered all the necessary tools, a 2.5 millimeter Allen key, a pair of needle nose pliers, a pair of scissors, and a small towel. If you got your MK3S Plus as a kit like I did, Purusha provides you with the tools you need to assemble your printer 
minus the scissors and the towel, of course. These tools also come in handy when you need to disassemble and replace components, like in my case. I turned off my printer and unplugged it. I took off the flexible steel sheet and I covered the heat bed with a small towel to protect the surface of the heat bed from damage during disassembly. Using the Allen key, I opened the NC case, unscrewing the single screw that keeps the NC case closed. Using scissors, I carefully cut the two zip ties holding the cable bundle together without accidentally cutting any of the cables. I unscrewed the two screws from the cable clip and removed it. And finally, I disconnected the print fan from the NC board. I cut the zip ties from the cable holder at the back of the extruder and removed them. I removed the textile sleeve from the cable bundle. I unscrewed the four screws from the back of the X carriage and pushed the print fan cable back through the opening and the X carriage back. I removed the super pender cable and the print fan cable from the channel at the side of the extruder. I unscrewed the two screws on the front side of the print fan and removed the fan. After successfully removing the old fan, I unboxed the new fan and gathered seven zip ties to prepare for installation of the new fan. I slid the new print fan in the fan shroud and aligned it properly. While fixing the fan in place, I screwed in the screws and tightened them carefully. I guided the print fan cable through the channel at the side of the extruder and I pushed the cable from the super pender back into the channel covering the print fan wires. I pushed the print fan cable through the opening of the X carriage back. After pushing the cable through the X carriage back, I placed the X carriage back on the extruder and I carefully screwed it in place. I opened one end of the textile sleeve and slid it on the cable bundle leading from the extruder, leaving the cables from the hot end out. The length of the first wrap should be slightly longer than the cable holder, about five centimeters. I took three zip ties and inserted them into the lower row of the cable holder. I tightened these zip ties slightly off center to the left and cut the ends off as close to the head as possible using the pliers. Next, I placed zip ties through the upper slots on the cable holder. Before tightening these zip ties, I added the cables from the hot end using the channels at the bottom of the X carriage to arrange them properly. Once the hot end cables were in place, I tightened the zip ties and cut the end as close to the head as possible. I opened the textile sleeve and inserted the cables from the hot end to the bundle. I guided the textile sleeve to the cable bundle from the extruder to the NC case. I slid the sleeve in the holder at least three quarter inches and I used the extruder cable clip and the two screws to fix the cable bundle in place. I made sure the nylon filament isn't pushing the motor cables in the bundle. I slightly unwrapped the sleeve and pushed the filament up over the motor cables. Once the new fan was connected and the cable bundle was securely back in place, I used two zip ties to secure the cables in the NC case. I closed the cover and carefully screwed it shut. Now that I had my new print fan properly installed, I turned on my printer went to calibration in the menu and ran a self test to ensure that everything works as expected and all wires are connected correctly. Once I got the okay, I got back to work printing my latest project. Well, there you have it. I replaced my print fan and I'm now able to move forward. For those of you who also own the Purusha MK3S Plus, I hope you find this video useful. As always guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and watch out for more content to come. Thanks for watching.